How's it going? It's going good, man. How are you doing? Uh, cold. Is it? Dude, it's freezing. <sighs> it was 60-something today. It's it's 11 right now. <laughs> <laughs> on Sunday, oh, on Sunday we had a high of six. It was it was negative six wow. in the morning, dude. It was just like, oh man. That's normal though, right? Oh, uh, we get a bad spell of like two weeks of you know, zero, ten degrees, you know. I'm gonna be building a trike at work next okay. week, which would be kind of cool on a on a Honda came out with a GL eighteen hundred, uh called they call the F six B. So it's like the gold wing without the rear luggage box. Okay. So imagine just like a flat style um gold wing, big old seat. It looks like uh like the Harley baggers, like the ones that have like the nice big fairing in the front and it's like a flat streamlined bike behind it. And this one, I'm not sure how much it is because of the, S, the, F, the F6B, you know, the labor is not quite as much, I don't think, but it's pretty expensive, man. It's it's probably about 12 grand for the kit. Wow. Because because they do a rake front end too, you know, so let me turn my volume off. Um, they changed the, the rake on the front. So I had to get into the front part as well. Wow. That is a big job, dude. It's a big job, man. It's a big job. And then you're going off of the instructions. You know? Yeah, like right. You're just following instructions the whole way. And they're not always the same. And these are handmade kits. So the fiberglass is all handmade. Sure. So it's, it always, it's always it's, different. It's not perfect. Yeah. Right. It's not perfect. And you want it to be perfect, you know, because they're paying a lot of money for it. But, you know, putting this back on and remounting fiberglass panels that Honda already made and trying to make them fit, it's just... It can be weird. I did one on a Valkyrie. I've done one on, on a standard gold wing. Then this one will be the F6B. So we'll, we'll see how it does. Mm, good luck, man. Thank you. <laughs> how, are, uh, how are your projects coming? Mm, um, this one here, the motor is done. Cool. Um, oh, geez. I don't know where I'm going with this thing right now. Um, it's like you just I, keep taking it apart. Yeah, because because <laughs> you know what I I get into it and I find loose bolts, incorrect mm -hmm. hardware, and I'm like, oh, I got to go through this thing every nut and bolt. Yep. Okay. So like I I just see, and then like with the with the swing arm, it was powder coated, but the seals and bearings were all left in place, and they taped it off, and the, the seals are all oh. uh, have powder coat packed on. I'm <laughs> like, you know, I might as well just replace the bearings too. So I'm yep. I'm I'm rebuilding all that. The swings aren't swing arm is off um so yeah just one one step at a time you know yeah that that's what i run into on a lot of stuff that i'm that i want to do because and that will like that will set you back because i feel like yeah there's like two type of maybe there's three type of people but two type of people who are like redoing their stuff is just like they'll take it apart they'll see it and be like this is fine and they'll put it back together where i'm like i take it apart this is not going to be fine for either too long or there's already something wrong with it that. I'm like, I'm just not like paint on the seals. I'm like, I don't want that to be paint on the seals. Yeah. If I, if I take the seals off and I might as well just do the bearings and then you got to order the bearings. <laughs> yeah. Well, the, the swing arm bearings, the bearings themselves are okay. Okay. Um, the linkage bearings are shot. I mean, yeah. there's so much play. So I got to do those. I might as well do the swing arm too. I'm, it's right there. Yep. Um, and so forth. So that's, that's this thing. Uh, the Chevelle. I had to take some time and think about the plan of running all the hot yeah. side turbo stuff. Cause I'm running it underneath the trans and this car is pretty low. Okay. So I set the car on the ground and I mocked up the tube and it looks like I'll have three and three quarter inch to four inch clearance to the ground, which I think will be sufficient. Cause my old, okay. old exhaust was three and a half and I didn't scrape. So I'm good okay. there. And then I had to plan for an air conditioning compressor and routing all the lines. I'm not, I'm not doing AC now, but I will want AC in the car eventually. Yeah. So I figured that all out. I called some companies and yes, their compressor will fit there and they have brackets and all this stuff. So I got, I got a plan set now. Yeah. So I just need to do some actual work now. 
So, are you drinking beer? Yes. All right. Welcome back. Yeah, you ready for this? I went all out. All right, let's see it. But Del, I don't, I don't know what it is. Delirium. Delirium. <laughs> oh, it's English. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Tremens. It's uh, dude. Guess how much for four of these costs? <laughs> oh, um, it could be easily sixteen ninety nine. 24 bucks, dude. Holy crap. And I asked after I bought it, I'm like, how much were these? He's like, 24. I'm like, oh, all right, well, I can't do anything about it now. I might as well right. drink it. <laughs> Thanks, Broken Motor Show. <laughs> yep. Yeah, exactly. I didn't drink for a whole month, so uh, I yeah, figured, that's right, man. I figured I'd, Splurged. I'd, yeah. So give me a, a little bit of insight on that. Is that like a local place or? No, it's um, it's a Belgian ale. Um, eight point five. Nice. But what I will do is I went to Beer Advocate and I found my most favorite review on this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let it rip, dude! I want to hear the review. Okay, this is from a guy called I'm no doctor, but <laughs> or is clear yellow gold body with a billowing frothy sudsy chalk white soap bubble head god that has moderately high retention and leaves copious amounts of sudsy sticky <laughs> lacing as it fades aroma is a boozy banana clove bright apple possibly pear and yeast taste so follows good. the nose with the bubblegum additions i can go on and on but i mean <laughs> jesus man <laughs> soak it all in man that's awesome i'm drinking um i haven't uh seen this one yet i think it's like a one-off from new belgium one of my favorite comps i'll be uh sending you one of these i'm almost done w with your six pack okay um but new belgium wild ride their 30th anniversary amber ipa coming in at a uh leisurely seven percent um yeah so we'll let it rip nice so which one did you like out of all that i've sent you I'd say the one that you like the most. Oh, yeah? I, I forgot what it was called. The Moon Man? The Moon Man. That one was really good. Yeah. I like it. It's a it's a easy drinker, and it um, had a, enough flavor to, you know, kind of stick around. Yeah. It wasn't like a like a super light beer that I'm, yeah. send, I'm sending you some danks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, some real dingers. Uh, so. Nice. Well, hey, when you go to Mama Tried. Mm-hmm in wisconsin you can yep. drink all the moon man you want man i'm definitely stopping by there what's going on everybody welcome to the broken motor show where i cody richards from motorcycle md and my buddy matt from how to motorcycle repair go through emails that you guys send us in to talk about motorcycles problems you may be having um funny stories who knows what we'll get but it's a way that we can hopefully provide you guys some value, um, get you guys involved with our channels, and uh, we can talk motorcycles and hang out. That's what we love to do. So there's a specific email that you need to uh, write into. Matt, what is that email? Yeah, so if you got a question to submit, uh, the email is askbrokenmoto at gmail.com. So put the year, make, model in the subject and just be uh, really descriptive in the body of the uh, email. Mileage. Um, your location and pictures and videos are a huge plus. Yeah, yeah. So make sure to include that stuff. Very cool. So let's jump into this, huh? All right. So I get the I, first one, huh? I believe we did have a trivia question from last. Oh, time. yeah. Okay. So, um, real quick for anybody who answered, um, the question I had to look through the video again to remember it, but it was, uh, when cornering. On a motorcycle, which tire takes up almost 75% of the uh, traction in cornering when you're on a motorcycle? And the correct answer is the front wheel. The front wheel absorbs most of the control and traction from your bike. Believe it or not, the smallest tire on, on there takes it all in. Yeah, that was going to be my guess. Yeah. But sometimes I wheelie through my turns, remember? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. I'm not sure how much of that is true on a, on a dirt bike, you know, maybe it's the same, but, 
It's hard to say, you it, know, because you know, it depends on where you are in the corner. Right. I mean, if Wait. you're trying to dig yourself out of a rut, well, it, the corner, it, it, there's a lot of scenarios in dirt. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. So when you're coming in, you know, it's a lot on the front tire, but once you get past like the apex or the, you know, you're, you're on the gas, you oh, should yeah. be on the gas. Right. So and that front wheel may, may barely be touching, yeah. you know, it might just be all like weight, weight difference, yeah. but cool. Um, so we need to announce the next trivia question. Yeah. Back to back. Do you have one ready? Yeah. Cool. Shoot. All right. Since you were talking about weight on tires and whatnot, so I, I figured I'd go along with that. And uh, okay. If you have your bike on your side stand and you want to lift it off the side stand, which way should your handlebars point? Ooh. Full left or full right in the middle? And why? What happens when you have it in a certain way? Good question. You know the answer to this, right? I want to say that I do. Okay. But I wouldn't say that I'm conscious enough to do it every time. Okay. You know, because I, I hop on and off 20 bikes in a day. And I'll get on it however I need. I'll, I'll horse slap that thing and jump over the rear seat if I have to. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good question, though. Good question. I think I know the answer, and I'm excited to hear it from next week. So. All right. Sounds good. Comment below, guys. Let us know what your answer is, or email us in. Either or. Yeah. So, question number one. I would like to take this one because I actually own this bike. I own two right. of these bikes. Sound it's good? It's because you want me to get number two. That's why. That's exactly the reason, actually. <laughs> Not going to lie. No. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Go ahead. <laughs> You probably read the whole thing. I didn't read the whole thing. I was like, oh, okay. All right, question number one, episode 27. Welcome, you guys. Let's dive in. This is from Matthew. Um, I don't know where he's at. So, Matthew, uh, he says, I have a 1992 Honda CB750 Nighthawk. I have some K&N cone filters. Uh, part number 0984. I can get the ones on the outside to fit, but the ones on the inside will not go on. Is there another pod filter that will do better? I need your advice. Thank you. And he gave us a link to a K&N uh, catalog, but I didn't even need to look at this. I put because... that I put that in there. Oh, you okay, yeah. cool. Well, thank you, Matt. I I, I didn't look at it. <laughs> oh, okay. Cuz you know the answer, right? I or it may not be the best answer, okay. but I have an answer for him. Okay. So the problem that he's having is when you go to pod filters on those Nighthawks, they have a really thick backbone that drops just behind the motor, right? So the carbs are pretty close to it because you have your, when you run a stock airbox, then you have the airbox kind of juts off with like two, two into one intakes for the airbox, big mammoth looking. They're probably stretch about four inches from the airbox to wrap around that downpipe on both sides going to the carbs. And the what he's running into is the pod filter, like the biggest end. So you know how pod filters are like they, they cone up. Yeah. The biggest end is now contacting that center frame. So, so I want to um, force him to think outside the box a little bit on getting these things to fit, which is what I had to do because when you buy Canon filters, you spend a lot of money on them and there's no real filter other than like maybe the oval ones that may be his answer, but I haven't tried them. So I can't tell you that it would work, but the oval ones, obviously it's oval. It's not a big round pod and the oval ones might fit better in, the, in that frame. Someone's probably done it. I didn't. So what I did was I extended the intake from the carbs with aluminum pipes and I polished the aluminum pipes. I'll show a video. Um, I'll put a picture up there, but I just extended them out like maybe three inches. So I had to use two different rubber clamps to nice to seal them to the pipe fit the widest part of the carb. Then I sealed that and then I extended that out three to four inches for the same diameter of the pod filter. Now, now the pod filter sticks out past the frame. It may look a little dorky. I think it looks kind of cool because it's like you got two. I didn't to actually all four of them, but it made me gain that clearance. What I, 
what I also did first was this is back in my back in my younger days because I've had that bike for probably six years now. I heated the metal tube in the back frame and I beat that thing in. <laughs> metal tube goes down the back and I just took. I heated the mess out of it with, with, with two blow torches and I took a mallet and I beat it in, beat it in just enough for that to fit. Right. The problem is now you have an ugly down tomb frame. You've compromised the, the structure of the frame, even though that frame is great. Um, I'm not worried about it. I just took it in just, it was like this. Now it's kind of like this in that one location. Didn't crack the metal. The paint came off obviously from beating on it, but they fit. I'm not going to tell you to ruin your bike that way because the right answer that I came up with was just extending those tubes out. I, of course, I did it afterwards because um, <laughs> I like the look of it. But that that was my response to that when you're running the pod filters. Matt, do you have a better answer? Uh, after hearing you, no. But okay. what I did is I, I put that K&N link in there. And mm -hmm. then, you know, I, I was going to just suggest because I, I wasn't sure sometimes the the the, the pod large side of the cone is too big of a diameter so when you stack all four they don't fit Touch. so i i thought yeah. that's what the problem was going to be so i was just going to suggest to hey go in here yeah and, and dimension it out measure it up yeah. what you need and they might have something yeah because you can get angled yeah yeah exactly so this see the, the see this ang angle right there yep so if you kick them out out of the way of that down tube maybe it'll work yeah Absolutely. They do so, have that option. So we'll throw the link down there and it's pages 272 to 279 for round tapered filters. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Matt, what you can also do is just Google. I'm sure you're trying to build some kind of cafe racer out of it. Good luck. Um, it's, it's a really nice bike. Uh, Google a bunch of images, man. Cafe racer. I'm sure people do that. Go on Instagram, look at the hashtag CD750 Cafe Racer or Nighthawk Cafe, and look and see what, that, what 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 other people do. I feel like one of the reasons that is so cool to do because you can get tons of cool ideas from online and what and what people have done. You can see because they've already put in the work to, to figure out what worked and what didn't work. You know what I mean? And you can get some um, some encouragement from that. That's what I do a lot of times. Absolutely. Yeah cool so matt yes we have a way for people to um support us that's right and we we call it the beer fund it's a it's a easy way for you guys to say hey i like what you guys do i enjoy the content here's three bucks and that buys us some beer that we get to drink while we talk to you guys some deliriums some delirium some uh <laughs> wild rides you know we're going crazy over here um but we have some people who uh, donate quite frequently or brand new. Let's give them a shout. Yes. So those people are, we have our regular Justo. Thank you, Justo, sir. Thank you. Another regular, The Fits. The Fits. And here's Justo again. So he donated twice. <laughs> Thanks. Always, man. Thanks, Justo. And we have Paul from the UK. It looks like he bought us another tray. So thanks, another Paul. Tray. Thank you guys so much. <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah, it means a lot. It's really cool to, to see that every week, and uh, you guys mean a lot to us. So yeah, I, like I wish I could remember if they had like plugged in a question. We've done so many now that I can't remember like what Justo might have written in. I don't know if he ever did. Did he? I don't know. I, I don't feel know. like he would have, or maybe the fits. Did, I don't know. Give us an email, guys. Let yeah. us know. Give us an update. We'd yeah. we love to hear from you guys. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Cool. All right. This one's all you, Matt. Oh, Take all it. right. Take it over, dude. So guess who it is? <laughs> it's Joe uh, on two wheels, is it? And uh, it's with this Tau Tau 50. Okay, the yeah. scooter guy. All right. So we, I think we asked, hey, we need to see some pictures, some scenic pictures. Um of this bike and where you take it. I think his pictures were too big to to send us or he wanted us to get on Google Hangouts or something. So we didn't get all those, but we we got some pictures of the scooter. Yeah. And some of his stickers. Did you check some of those out? <laughs> 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 all 
I'm going to, I'm going to pull those up. I'm going to share my screen. Um, and we're, we got to look at those because they're very funny. cool. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> so he sent us in a two page email about some of the roads he takes and stuff. But anyway, I'm just going to paraphrase some of this stuff. All right. So he named his scooter, the little engine that could, <laughs> um, he wants to install some fog lights on it. Uh, next up, he goes on this road that starts at about 200 feet elevation, goes all the way up to 2,700 feet. The road is steep, twisty, and has tight hairpin turns. Nice. On a scooter, man. That's crazy. Yeah, man. All right. So let me, let me, let me share my screen here. All right. All right. So what we have here is his scooter. Those are his riding shoes. Yep. <laughs> Oh man, can I go to the next one? All right, can you still see it? Yep. All right, so he's gonna put some fog lights where that reflector is. So I guess that's what right he's on. trying to point out. Very cool. Got a little uh, road rash there, you know. Oh yeah. Dumped it for sure. But at least he's wearing gloves, right? That's right. <laughs> there they are. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Full let's look, <laughs> let's look at some of these pictures. <laughs> uh, oh man, I love sushi. <laughs> Sushi's good. So he's got airbag check stickers, <laughs> stuff like that. Let's see. Boobs. Boobs. Lots of boobs. <laughs> airbag check. Uh, there's a close oh, up. Man. It looks like it's it looks like it's covering up a crack. Looks like potentially <laughs> cracked his bike. I'll just slap a sticker on it. There Love you it. go. Revzilla. Shout out. Uh, a little blurry. Oh, it's still blurry. Don't follow me. You won't make it. I <laughs> <laughs> oh, love it. That's oh, awesome. man. And some more stickers. Revzilla. What else we got on there? Hold on real quick. We got Outlaw Racing Products. We got some Tusk off-road stuff. Z what, what's ZLA? Uh, I don't know. He really likes ZLA. He's got four stickers on there. Is that a country? You know, maybe, some people have country stuff. Maybe that's Revzilla. Oh, no, Revzilla, yeah. Yeah, I see yeah, Revzilla.com under here. Dude, sweet. Okay. Sweet. So, I didn't know you can buy parts for your Tau off Revzilla. Maybe uh, it's not. They, they have a lot of gear. So, you buy gloves. Ah, I'm sure they, yeah. they're they big yeah, on and those gear. Shoes. His yeah. riding shoes. Yeah, yeah for sure. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Very uh, cool. Yeah, uh, he, he sent us, uh, I think, like three more emails oh, that did were he? just slam-packed. I, I, I believe it's the same guy because it's pictures of just, like, where he rides. Oh. And because of the length, lengthy description he gave us of everywhere that he rides, which is awesome, he gave us a butt-ton of pictures. Um, so, I mean, obviously, I'm not going to put them all because there's, like, at least 50 of them on okay. there. So, I'll, I'll try to highlight some some cool ones, and I'll post them up. Um, but I appreciate the email. Yeah, absolutely. It, it, it was really like, that's what we like to see. We like to see people's bikes and, yeah. you know, shout them out. I totally didn't see those pictures. So <laughs> I apologize for that. Those are the only yeah. ones I saw the scooter. So honestly, if you were to pull them up on your screen, you would have had a bucket load of pictures to go through. So all it right. is all good. Well, I'll just put some up here. Yeah. Thank you, Joe. Yep. Thanks for the laugh, dude. <laughs> yeah, man. We appreciate it. So, question three. Um, this is Jason from uh, VA, Stomping Grounds. Good evening. I have an O2 Shadow VT1100 C2 Sabre. Recently, I have been having issues after riding for a bit. That once I come to a stop, the idle doesn't seem to want to back down. Also notice that the rear cylinder exhaust header pipe is glowing red near the head. I have checked and I've checked and lubed the throttle and choke cables to make sure that all intake boots are good and tight. Excuse me. I even sprayed carb cleaner around boots to make sure that they didn't have any leaks. It does have the stock high it does have the stock high flow replacement air filter. So that's not a stock filter. He has the stock he has the aftermarket filter. High flow replacement air filter. So, okay, sorry. So it's a high flow filter that is in the shape of the stock filter. And Cobra slash cut exhaust. So real short exhaust, loud as a banshee. 
the header pipes are heat wrapped under the heat shields, which helped with the deceleration pop. I have also backed the air fuel screws out to about four turns and still having the high idle issue after running for a bit. It does it doesn't do it all the time, and that's what's driving me nuts. Thanks in advance, Jason. So this could be um there's no silver bullet for this. Um, but it it sounds like he needs to mess with um his jetting. Four out on the mixture screws is too far out for my liking. I'd like them to be more around like two and a half to three. It gives you a little bit more playability. Um I believe on the eleven hundred they run a bigger main jet in the rear cylinder because of overheating so that they honda uses uh fuel to help which it, it, it almost sounds kind of like an oxymoron not an oxymoron but it, it sounds redundant because you're adding more fuel to cool the cylinder now which doesn't really make a lot of sense but when it comes down to mechanical engineering i believe it does so yes, they run yeah, a, yep. a bigger main jet in the rear and maybe one full size, as Matt would say, or I maybe three or four numbers larger than the front. Um, like if they're running like a one, like a one fifty or a one seventy in the front, they're running like a one uh, seventy five in the rear, something like that. Um, and that does help. Um, it sounds like you could be a little bit lean on the rear cylinder. Um, it sounds like you're band aiding that D cell pop with uh four turns out on the mixture screw as well because that's the best place that you can get it to where it idles good has good response and little to no backfire as well as the heat wrap but as much of a part as that actually plays i'm not sure um i would go up on the idle screw um sorry the idle jet so if it's like 42 or um yeah 42 i'd go to like maybe a 45 or a 48 and see if, if you can't trim that fuel mixture screw in a little bit. And I would look and see what they have the main jets at. If you're running the same exact main jet in both front and rear, again, I'm not sure if they did this on this exact model, but I know they did it on a lot of the twin cylinder, um, twin carb setups. So check to make sure that you are running a larger main in the rear if the part fish calls for it or the factory service manual calls for it. Um, or give it a try because the reason why they do that is because the rear cylinder is tucked behind the front and the, so the front cylinder is getting all the cooling effects and that heat is now transferring back towards the motorcycle as you progress forward and that heat goes right back onto the rear cylinder. So the rear cylinder is never really getting cooled down per se. Um, I would also check the cooling system out. Make sure that your cooling system is like fully operational, um, full and that the fans do come on um, cause we don't want you to run into an overheating problem, but it sounds cause I like to try to cover this topic without spewing how much, uh, little information I know. Cause you can get red headers from rich mixtures as well, I believe. Um, you, you can definitely get, um, color changes with having a, a rich mixture on like a cheaper exhaust or a low level exhaust metal so but i i believe he's running too lean that's what i think what do you think uh i think i think you're right what what he's experiencing uh with the idle not coming down so that's like a, a lean hanging idle mm -hmm. um and and sometimes bikes that are lean will will that's like an it won't do it every time so if he's saying hey it's only doing it sometimes mm -hmm. uh well well there you go sometimes like when you blip the throttle it'll go and it'll just stay up there until you like hit the kill switch a few times to bring it down or whatever mm -hmm. um so that's a that's a perfect example of a lean hanging idle yeah um and given that his air fuel screws are out four turns it wants more fuel yeah, he's compensating for sure. Yeah, and um, now assuming the carbs are clean with this setup, I would bump the pilots two sizes. Okay. So, so you said 42, go, go to 48 or whatever it is. Go two yeah. sizes. 
Um, and that should bring you to three turns. And then that, that should be pretty good. Yeah. Uh, you have no vacuum leaks like you checked for. Yep. Um, yeah, that's all I have to add, to be yeah. honest. I wouldn't point towards carb zinc because it's not all the time. You know, I think it's, it's exactly what you said. Yeah. A hanging idle because of a lean situation. And like I, like I mentioned, you're, it sounds like you're kind of band-aiding it, so... It 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 would have been it would have been cool if you would given us some jet sizes for what like where you're at right now. We don't even know if he's been through the carb yet, you know. Yeah, I'm assuming it's probably stock. Yeah, it, you know it he could be. the the filter was slapped in there and the pipes, and now you got a problem. Now you got to make some changes. So yeah, you got to go into the carbs, man. Yep. Cool. All right. Thank you, Jason. Thanks, Jason. Question four. So, all right. So this this one's a little. I think you were having a conversation with this person. So I kind of, pa- I, was. I pasted all the stuff in here. And I, I actually edited the, edited this. Oh, okay. Matt. So it, it, if you want, I know the full story. Then you take it, my, my okay. friend. Yeah, cool. By all means. Yeah, so, because it was a conversation between us two, and he asked if one of his questions could be put on the Broken Moto Show. I said, absolutely, because this is a, a guy who's um, – uh, a success story from uh, purchasing the uh, inline four carb clean stuff that I have for the Nighthawk, which has helped a lot of people out, especially this guy. So the first is, and I'll, I'll kind of paraphrase this until, until he gets to his question. So the first issue that he ran into was, which I run into all the time, you pull a set of carbs apart, especially in the inline fours or twins. And it really doesn't matter. It's kind of a crap shoot. You pull, you start pulling stuff apart in the carb and then you realize that there's stuff missing or, you lose something. In his case, he lost on the mixture screws for every Honda that I can, that I know of. When they uh, use a mixture screw, whether it's mainly that they're, they're, they're fuel mixture screws, maybe not so much on the air screws, especially on the earlier stuff now that I think about it. But fuel mixture screws, they'll, they'll come with a mixture screw, a spring, a small rubber O-ring, and then they'll do a steel washer. Um, it's not in that order. It's actually spring steel yeah, I was washer. Just gonna say, yeah, rubber O ring. Yeah. And the steel washer, the whole purpose of that small, tiny, awkward sized steel washer, is so that the spring doesn't eat into that rubber O ring. So right. they want it to seal correctly. It adds a little bit of space for the spring to have tension as well. But the main goal is that the spring does not bite into that O ring and render it useless. You'll see this on uh, old paper oil filters i'm sure you saw it on your 750 they have a or you should have seen that spring because they you know you pop that cover off you got the paper filter underneath that paper filter is a spring and then they have a big like steel washer and that's so that spring doesn't dive into that rubber section of the filter same concept um he lost his Okay, and you can't buy this part from Honda. They don't sell it. They've never sold it. If you we're buy, ta- we're talking about just the washer, just the washer by itself. Uh, okay, you can buy a brand new mixture screw, and it. I I want to say that it will come with all the parts that all the parts needed, but now now you're spending like forty six yeah, bucks. Yeah, yeah. To have something that you already have just to get a little small washer. Right. So I sent him a link, and I'll put it in the description for this. You can buy a pack of these. You can buy like a pack of fifty. For like 10 bucks yes he needed one but i i actually was like hey man if you buy this pack i'll buy the rest of them from you because i run into carburetors all the time that don't have them and i could totally use this and he just sent it to me through a letter for free and it was awesome nice. so now i have like 48 of, of, of these um washers but he was missing it you guys cannot buy them from honda unless you buy a whole kit um, and they are available from, from, from Amazon and I'll put a link for them to grab. Is it just a standard metric washer? Yeah, I think it's get? like a four millimeter, okay. with the, but the, the thing is that, that the inside diameter is much larger than a standard washer. Okay. So it's not... it has to fit around that, that, that shaft. Okay. I so it, it, you can't go to Lowe's and get this. Right. Okay. It is going to be something that you order. Someone maybe found some somewhere where you can, but I've only found it on Amazon. Man, out of all these years I've been working on bikes, I've never lost really a washer. 
or a spring. Mm. Um, the oil rings are another story where you got to replace them or whatever. But yeah, um, if you have links to the O rings only, let me know because that would okay. I would love to just have a bag of fifty or hundred of them. Heck yeah, heck yeah. I mean, I'll do a little bit of research and see if I can't find them. If no one makes them, so right there, business idea: sell O rings on the side, man. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be rich. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah. Um. So. The cool thing about working at, at the at Honda is like a lot of times we run into carburetors that are just like too far gone, you know, even on stuff from the nineties and two thousands, they just get eaten up. We've seen it a lot, or um it's just it's just too bad and we'll just replace the car because it's still available, you know. It's like we can get a brand new carb for this thing. It'll be awesome. I can just tune it, boom, you're done. Yeah. And you have you have brand new stuff. So well, like we'll keep the carburetors. Like we have boxes and boxes and boxes of old carburetors. And we'll stay, we'll take all of those little, all those little, uh, <laughs> like the springs, those mixer screws. We'll just keep them, man. Cause it's gold. I yeah. Mean, especially when you're trying to finish a carb job and you've ordered parts for it, the parts came in and you still need something else or whatever the case is, or you can knock it out in one day, just go into a pack and pull out an old one. It's, I mean, yeah. it, it's good to have for what I do. Um, but yeah, so back to what he says, um, I gave him the link. It was a big success story because he got what he wanted. Uh, he said, thanks for the video. It's clear. Cons this is, he talking about the car video that he used to clean his carburetor. Thanks for the video. Clear, concise, and logical instruction. Got the, got the teardown and cleaning done along with most reassembly. Prob probably would have gotten the reassembly done. The reassembly done. Okay, so he didn't finish it. Um, to my hands and knees. He spent an hour on his hands and he's looking for that stupid washer. So um, he has completed it. He's done this. He's had some adjustments he needed to do, um, but he thanked me for the video. Um, so he said, I have a couple questions for you on carb adjustments. Feel free to use this for the Broken Motor Show. And we will, Ken. I have not had a chance to look at everything you guys have done. So if you have already addressed something like this, I will catch it there. Signing this to Ask Broken Motor as well and look forward to hearing the answer. Um, so, one okay. So, 1995 CB750 Nighthawk, 28,000 miles, sat for 12 years in a garage. Did the carb rebuild and fired it up. Basically, the bike will idle after cold start under choke at around 1,000 RPM, and then as it warms up, it starts dropping to 800. Totally normal. This happens even if I take the choke out after warm up period. It will idle around 800 RPM. I give it some throttle and it has good response but when i go to let go of the throttle and let the bike return to idle the bike will drop below 800 rpm and stall out still playing with the auto the auto adjustments so i may find an answer soon but wondering if the auto mixture screws need to be adjusted as the auto speed is adjusted i did the carb rebuild and set the needle valve to three turns from bottom out as recommended as part of the rebuild i added number four shims otherwise which is just a little tune-up that i I do them. I do do these to richen them up a little bit. Otherwise, it's pretty much stuck. If you guys have time, would love would also welcome your opinion on cycle gear. I know helmets, boots, gloves, and certain items, but would go. But would you go with a textile jacket with inserts for back, shoulders, and elbow, or go leather? My intention is late spring, summer rides. Not really a commuter, but more of getting out on the road. Anyway, I'm sorry getting out on the road and away from the world kind of rides. Lots of rural two lanes and light traffic in Western PA, north of Pittsburgh. Then again, got to watch for deer, rabbits, and bear. Oh my. Appreciate all the help. Can't wait to get on the road once spring gets here. So for some reason, I was like flashing to a response email that I gave him. And I think I, I gave him the wrong information because I think I read this wrong. So I think I told him to turn the, the mixture screws out and what it sounds like he needs to turn them in. Yeah. If it dips below idle, yeah. it's rich. I think I might've gotten the wrong information, but I might not have answered. I don't know. But a stock bike, three turns out, that's not abnormal. That's not abnormal. It probably you know wasn't. I did tell him something and it was that on the, the 750 Nighthawks, one of the problems that you run into with these is they have a, a choke rail with arms for the plungers. Then they lift the plungers up individually. So there's like one rail 
and you tighten these arms onto this rail and then the arms have to feed into the plungers and that's what lift the plungers up if you don't get that stuff i mean squeaky yeah. clean perfectly clean all of them won't rest back down okay so then it's constantly trying to run rich at idle. yeah you got a plunger that's open yeah so i, I think what, what i told him was check the choke free play and manually operate it you know look at your carburetors where the choke plungers are pull it up drop it down a number of times you know a couple of times and then see if you see any of them that are hung up and you can kind of check that by just using your thumb and like pressing down on the outermost ones and see if they drop more you know because i I've, I've run into that for sure on one of my nighthawks i've cleaned the carbs on it and then i run it you know all through winter time and eventually things start to get a little bit like it gets, you know, they just don't function as cleanly as they did at first. And when I push the choke in, it does kind of what he does. It's still kind of running well, but it may kind of rich enough and I'll manually push now with my thumbs while I'm riding on it or while I'm, I'm idling and it will change it and it will solve the problem. So I think that was another thing that I told him was just to check that function of the plungers. Sure. You said a lot there. Yeah, I did. <laughs> I, I read a lot. I didn't think I, that I, was going to be that long. I was like, me neither. You extracted a lot there. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Cycle gear. What kind of, if you were to ride in the wintertime or on your uh, late spring summer rides, are you just like a, a hoodie and helmet guy or so? Do you suit up? Yeah. When the, all the, all the street riding I do is, side streets here if i have to test bikes okay and maybe a rip yeah on the main road and i'm done but yeah so that's not a lot of time on the road and it's not a lot of risk so therefore i have helmet i have a helmet on that's it yeah no gloves nothing you know it's pretty low-key riding yeah. uh, if i was riding all the time man i would i would have all that stuff in my jacket right um gloves everything boots yeah i would yeah. have all that how about you um i have to test ride a lot of bikes so i'm kind of doing the same thing before i would say maybe two years ago i was riding every single day um on uh my nighthawks the 450 or something like that i'm not a big fan of leather i feel like when i if i ride with leather in the in the cold i just turn into like a popsicle because like the leather's cold you know what i mean and i mean they sell like thin silicone like the motorcycle industry for jackets has changed astronomically you know every year i feel like it changes you can get a nice leather jacket with thin silicone and it's like you don't feel the leather on the outside it doesn't feel as like as like stiff you know but leather does stiffen up no matter what and I feel like once it gets cold, it's just cold all the time. I ride, if I'm going to ride, um, with like uh, like a canvas style. Um, I have like a, I have a jacket from Saint Company, really expensive company. I didn't buy it. I won it in a contest. But I have another jacket that I've gotten from, uh, I don't think it was Cycle Gear, but I think it was, um, it, it might have been Cycle Gear. I, I can't remember. But it's like a canvas style. And it has places for it to breathe. It has places for it to put pads in if you want. But the canvas style seems to breathe more in the springtime, right? And the leather, and if you ride leather in, in the springtime, I feel like you're, either, you're gonna get really hot and then there's no real way to kind of escape that. But in the canvas, if you can withstand a little bit colder, colder temperatures at the beginning of spring and just kind of put layers on, cause that's always the key is just layers. Um, and as you trim down during the spring, you can still have that canvas jacket on the same one with armor in it and everything. And it, I feel like it, it just breathes a little bit better. That's, that's my only advice for that. But some people swear by leather, man. Like they're like leather chaps, leather jackets, leather gloves. They're like, this is all I ever, like, this is the best thing ever, but I'm 150 pounds soaking wet, you know? So it just doesn't work for me. All right, cool. let's wrap this up. Take us out, Matt. All righty. That was four questions. Only an hour, 10 minutes to go through that. <laughs> so, um, okay. So we'll try to be short here. So if you guys have a tech question, Cody, what is that email where people can reach us? 
askbrokenmoto at gmail.com. Send us uh, pictures of your bike, videos of it running. Um, if you're doing it, um, it by the model, just put it in the subject. It helps us categorize things a little bit better. But um, info is great. Anything you got, year, make, miles um, would be really helpful. And uh, yeah, that's it. Ooh, it's colored. Yeah, it's anodized green for like All a forest right. green. Here, I got it. I light. like it, man. The lighting's kind of shitty. But yeah, I just picked up these parts. So this is this is the real deal. Is that the final product? Yep. This is the final. So cool, man. So you you you, you remember that you'd use this for vapor honing. Vapor blasting and it also dry blasts as well. So very cool. Um these guys here are the 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 rest of the pieces are at the anodizer. So I'll have them back in a week and then uh, I'll put a video together and then start shipping them. Cool, man. So I've heard that you've gotten a lot of uh, a lot of um, interest in those things already. So yeah, I uh, the the pre orders are sold out. Very cool. So there's no more to to go <laughs> if you want one. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna have to wait another month. <laughs> you making so, more of them? Yeah, I will. So yeah. my my goal is to ship these out, just get a little feedback, and then obviously order more um and then keep them in stock it's this this was just a pilot run if you will you know yeah cool man i also saw that you came out with uh, a little uh product launch yeah so uh i've been wanting to do this for a while so it's a home business course so if cool. you want to learn to earn some cash you want to start up your own business i put together a course it's four and a half hours long nice like 49 video chapters Wow. Okay, cool. So some of them are a minute or two long. Some of them are yeah. 20 minutes long. You know, it just depends. But um, I cover uh, starting up a service business and then also an online business because my, my business is both. Yeah. And they complement each other. Yeah. And the online thing, as you know, is a little passive. So that's always nice. Very cool. So, yeah, definitely check that out. Um, it's n nine years of what I've learned into – Four and a half hours. I'm sure there's some gold in there for oh, sure, yeah, man. For sure. That's awesome, dude. Cool. I don't have too much to plug. Um, uh, the 900 video is out um, for anybody who's looking to clean carburetors on a uh, dual overhead cam 750 or the uh, famous CB900 F or C. Uh, I have a full walkthrough on that now, um, front to back shot. It's a long video. I think it's probably as close to three hours long. And I show you how to remove them, install them, tune them, clean them, front to back, split them all the way through. Um, I've, I've gotten some guys who are really enjoying that and some good results. So that's nice. out. Um, uh, oh, uh, Broken Motor Show, Motorcycle NB, sponsored by Grip Clean. Mm. Product placement. Bing, bing, bing. Um, love their wipes. They're great. I love the wipes the most because it's, Really nice when you're out in the garage and sort of running inside or you're about to go inside and your hands are just destroyed. Yeah. You know, and, and you may not have like running water out here. Quick wipe of these things. You can take everything off your hands, all of your tools, and then the napkin still wet and is able to clean even more if you want. And then get your hands nice and clean. You can go inside because my house is all white inside. So <laughs> if I go inside with dirty hands. With I'm fresh paint, see right? Whew. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Fresh paint. Better believe it. So that's one of my favorite products from them. Um, but if you guys are interested in trying some stuff out, hit it up. Um, you get 10% off if you use the code MOTOMD in your cart. 10% off your entire order. Um, I've, there's been some people picking it up and they're liking it. So Yeah, and, and that's, uh, that's especially important now because nitro gloves are like four yeah. or five times the price. It's crazy. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, My favorite company, Glove Works, is now like $40 for a box of, yeah. of disposable gloves. I'm just like, I'm not going to have it. I'm yeah. just not going to do it. Just, I boycott it. Just buy some wipes. Just buy some wipes, man. <laughs> yeah. Cool, man. Um, so. Yeah. Cool. Well, Anything until else? next time. No, I don't got nothing, man. No, I, 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 I think I, we I talked I, enough. Yeah. I spouted it all off in the beginning, so. Yeah. 
Okay. All right. Later, guys. Later.